Hello and welcome back. Recently I've been looking at the resolutions of cameras. We're seeing very high resolution cameras on the market, 24, 36, 45 and even up to 60 megapixels, which prompted me to ask the question, how much resolution do you really need to make a photographic print? And also, what do you need for social media posts and the internet? The answer might surprise you, so let's dive in and have a look. So previously, We've looked at aspects of resolution, in particular in relation to aspect ratios and exporting files for various uses. But this time we're taking a close look at what actual resolution we need for either the web or, more importantly, in my book, for making a photographic print. So firstly, let's have a look at what resolution is. And quite simply, it's the total number of pixels that your sensor can capture. And here's an image of a a recent Nikon camera, a 24 megapixel camera, and typically this would be the size, and we use this as an example uh, because the maths are fairly simple. 6,000 odd pixels wide by 4,000 pixels high, 6 times 4, 24 megapixel image. So 24 million pixels making up the image resolution. That's all very well and good, but how does that relate to the various output options? So let's have a look at the couple of different ways we can use images. Now, if you're a Facebook person, uh, the image size that Facebook uh, stipulates as their maximum resolution is 1200 pixels by 630 pixels high. So in fact, all you're looking for for a Facebook image is something less than one megapixel, 0.75 megapixels to be precise. So you don't need 24 megapixels to upload an image to Facebook and in fact if you did that Facebook would resize the image anyway. And what about other social media? Well Instagram and things like that have even smaller or very similar resolutions required. Um, Instagram requires no more than 1.45 megapixels or even 1.16 megapixels. And most me uh, social media outlets have a very low resolution output. So using our high powered 24 megapixel or higher resolution camera for purely making images for the internet or social media is a little bit of an overkill. But what about when it comes to making a photographic print? What do we need to be able to do that? So let's have a look at that now. So when it comes to printing, here are the typical print sizes for use in Europe and Australia. Uh, and unfortunately for Americans, uh, the, these sizes will be a little bit odd for you, but uh, we'll do a bit of a conversion in a minute to inches. Because the problem with printing is that print resolution is in pixels per inch, and we're dealing with millimetres. So we need to do a little bit of mental arithmetic and um, work these things out. But here are the typical sizes, A4, A3 and A2. And what I've said here, the paper sizes are larger than the actual print size. And that's because in most instances, you're going to want to print onto the paper and have a little bit of a border around it for either mounting and display or purely for handling. Because if you're printing with a high quality inkjet printer, you can't print all the way to the edges because the rollers have to be able to feed the paper through and allow the ink to be paint, uh, sprayed onto the paper. So typically, these, is the, these are the sizes that I would use. So for instance, for an A3 sheet of paper, I would typically print at around 360 by 240 millimeters, which is maintaining our three to two aspect ratio. And we'll work on these figures and these aspect ratios for the purposes of working out these resolutions we need to make a high quality print. So let's now look at how we would calculate the number of pixels we need in our image to produce this high quality print. So when it comes to printers and selecting a printer, there are a couple of different main types. Uh, essentially, you'd probably be either printing on a Canon or HP printer, uh, which requires 300 pixels per inch files for maximum quality, or Epson uh, photo printers, which would require a 360 pixels per inch resolution. Now, there's no real difference in quality of the output of these printers. This is merely how the print head is set up and how the printer wants to receive the files. Now, I've seen a lot of information on people teaching you how to print, but what they don't explain is that the printer is a dumb instrument. It produces beautiful prints, 
but it relies on what is being fed into it. And it can't decide which pixels to print or which pixels to ignore. So that if you send it a file with more or less than its optimum print resolution, it's going to either uh, leave out pixels or it's going to make up pixels to make the resolution. And the results are not going to be satisfactory. So the smart thing we can do is when we size our images and select them for printing, we would size the print to the actual output size and at the required pixels per inch. And in most instances, we're going to be downsizing our files to be able to print them. But it's important to remember that the printer can't decide which pixels to print or which pixels to ignore. So we need to send it the file in the optimum format. So how do we size our images to get that optimum resolution for printing? Well, I've covered this in a previous series of uh, videos on printing for optimal quality, but quite simply, we can work out the resolution we need based on a very basic uh, series of mathematical calculations. Now, let's just say we want to work out the print resolution for uh, an either a, an Epson or a Canon printer. Firstly, what we do, we'll need to convert this back into inches because, as I said, our print resolution is worked out in pixels per inch. So let's just have a look at these calculations. These are not very tricky. 360 millimetres equals 14.17 inches by 240 millimetres is 9.45 inches. So to print at 360 pixels per inch on an Epson printer, we need our width 14.17 times 360 pixels per inch gives us a total number of pixels and by the height so 5,101 by 3,402 gives us a total print resolution requirement of 17.35 megapixels for this A3 size print. And if we're using a Canon or HP printer at 300 pixels per inch, the calculation is very similar, but we need a, a bit less resolution, 12.05 megapixels. And that's what the printer requires us to send it. Now there are other settings we need to adjust and set up for optimal printing. But for this video we're just purely talking about the resolution of the file that we need. Let's now see how that would work by resizing our image in Photoshop and sending it to the printer. So here's the original of this image. The file has been flattened. Let's have a look at the size of the file. Firstly, if we go to Image, Image Size, we look at the pixel resolution, that's 8,200 by 5,500, 5, 45 megapixels. It's a high resolution image. Now we want to send this to the printer at the size we want. So let's just change from pixels to millimeters. We know that our, our print size that we're going to work to is 360 by 240. If we keep this little chain symbol locked in, the proportions will remain the same. And we want our output at 360 pixels per inch and the resampling method we're going to use is automatic. Now I've done a lot of testing with the different types of resampling for instance we're not going to enlarge it we're reducing it we could use by cubic sharper we could use by cubic and these other ones but in fact automatic works as well as anything else so all we need to do now is resize our image and this is the size that will go to the printer. Now to check that we've actually made that print size correct, let's go back into image size and instead of millimetres now let's look at pixels and so we've got that pixel resolution that we spoke about just now and that's going to give our printer the optimum file size for printing to the best quality. So we've looked at the options to resize a print for an A3 size image but now let's have a quick look at A4 and A2 sizes. So A4 of course being a smaller size, I've done the same calculations, I won't labour it by going through all of this again, but the bottom line here is that on an Epson printer, for an A4 print to this size you only need about 9.76 megapixels, or for a Canon printer about 6.8 megapixels. So obviously we don't need the huge resolution that our cameras are capable of recording. But what about an A2 size print. Well, this of course is about the biggest most people will print to. And doing those same calculations for an A2 size print, we're looking at about 34.68 megapixels for an Epson printer and 24 megapixels for a Canon printer. So you can see that 
even with a reasonably high resolution camera we're still going to be down sampling our image even for an A2 size print and certainly for an A2 size print uh, you could easily go on an Epson printer down to 240 pixels per inch because the print size is so much larger and you would get away with a lot less resolution. So the simple answer is for making a, a, even an A2 size print you don't need the full resolution from your high resolution camera. But what's the advantage of having that higher resolution in the first place? Let's have a look at how we can use that. As we've seen even for a large print uh, you don't need that higher level of resolution. But one of the obvious answers might be it gives us a lot more scope to crop our image. And if we look here at an original of an image I captured in Svalbard, it was taken with a 600mm lens and even with that long lens I was still a little bit far away from the bears. But if I recrop this image to the size that I would print at A3, you can see that I can comfortably crop the image and not lose any quality uh, prior to printing. So having that extra resolution gives us a lot more scope for cropping and resizing our images and obviously we can output different shapes. But that's the most obvious answer. The other one might be um, looking at a high, re high ISO image uh, captured at high resolution you're likely to get quite a lot of noise and if we just zoom in on this wall rust that was captured at 7200 ISO you can see here that there's a bit of noise in the image and even using something like Topaz Denoise it does a very good job but you may find that if you downsample the image for the print size first and then apply the denoise you may get a slightly better result so another option might be having an image at high resolution and high ISO you've got a little bit more scope to work with to resize the image and get rid of that noise um, but the bottom line is if you're only ever producing images for the internet or social media you really don't need a high resolution camera at all. A smartphone may well be adequate for the job although there are some limitations with what you can do with a smartphone such as controlling depth of field and focus point and so forth. But even for a large size print you don't really need that higher resolution. Most people would probably print to A3 size, maybe to A2 size so our cameras really overachieve what we need to have for uh, a decent print size output. So I hope that's been useful and I look forward to seeing you again soon.